If you catch yourself asking someone, Who are you calling Pinhead? After you mention some form of aviation terminology incorrectly, then this video is for you. If you've been in the RC hobby for any amount of time, you've likely realized that lots of folks have their own jargon they use to reference different things happening in flight, on the ground, you name it. Some of this jargon isn't always used correctly, which can lead to some confusion when learning different concepts in aviation. It should be noted that our goal with this video is not to talk down to those who use these terms incorrectly, but rather use it as a learning opportunity in a fun and informative way. Let's make like Oscar from The Office with our first actually incorrectly used term in RC. Actually, you're speculating. Two-point landings. Nope, landing a tail dragger on the mains first doesn't throw two points on the scoreboard as the buzzer goes off. This term is one we've heard occasionally use over the years solely in RC. In the full-scale tailwheel world, and RC by extension, these are actually referred to as wheel landings. For those not familiar, wheel landings are when you land a tail dragger airplane on the main gear first, and then as your airspeed dissipates on the landing rollout, you gently lower the tailwheel onto the runway. Ultimately, you won't find the term two-point landing referenced anywhere in any FAA training or third-party tail dragger flying handbooks. You may get looked at funny at your local Armchair Pilots Anonymous Breakfast Club meeting if you utter this jargon. Be sure to reference our tail wheel landings video if you're interested in learning how to do wheel landings. Angle of attack versus attitude. We hear a lot of folks who are flying their 3D plane in a vertical climb improperly say they're climbing at a 90 degree angle of attack. We also hear folks get this backwards behind the flight line as well. The reality is, there's a concrete difference between angle of attack and attitude. What these folks really mean is that they are climbing with a 90 degree attitude, similar to your angry uncle. Now how about you do some work, Tom? Does that motivate just... you now, Tom? Sure. Let's define the jargon. Attitude is the angle or orientation between the airplane and the horizon. Angle of attack, to make it easy, is the angle between the wing and the relative wind passing your airplane. An easy way to grasp angle of attack is while on the freeway in your car. The air blowing by with your window down is the relative wind, and your flattened hand sticking out the window is your imaginary wing. If your hand is level, then your angle of attack is zero to the oncoming wind. If your hand is at 45 degrees, then the angle of attack is 45 degrees to the relative wind. In actuality, you can be at a 90 degree attitude in relation to the horizon and have a low angle of attack. Excess thrust. Paid for by the 3D gang. 3D flying is not a crime. Angle of attack has known ties to defining falling from the sky or stalls. This is another one that without having been introduced to what a stall really is, most folks tend to have a similar commonly mistaken concept of what really is happening when a wing stalls. Remember the definition of angle of attack? Higher angles of attack produce more lift, up to a point, called the critical angle of attack. A stall is defined as when your wing exceeds this critical angle of attack. On most planes, the angle is typically between 10 to 20 degrees. At this point, the wing is still producing some amount of lift, but it isn't enough to sustain a controlled flight condition. The main point here is that when this happens, the plane is going to most likely drop its nose, lowering the angle of attack, the attitude, increasing its airspeed, and entering normal flight again. It's not going to fall out of the sky because the invisible magic that makes planes fly has malfunctioned. Brownout versus loss of signal. Often in our hobby, we experience a legit loss of control of our airplanes in flight. The feeling of not having control is comparable to what happens when your Mustang slams into the median as you realize there's clearly a skill issue present. It hurts and generally leads to some scraps. Gorgeous, Ron, that was just lovely. After the scrap pile appears, folks will be heard saying, I had a brownout. Is this legit true? It could be, it couldn't be. A brownout is a loss of control specifically caused by your receiver voltage sagging due to your rat's nest of cables, old and terrible receiver battery, weak sauce BEC, or your 39 cent Alibaba switch being incapable of powering the servos or receiver. It's normal for the receiver voltage to go up and down a bit as you fly, but when it gets too low, drama occurs on the dance floor. Think of a brownout as blowing a circuit breaker, but in this case, it crashes your plane rather than causing an annoyance in the form of your air conditioner turning off at home. So what's the difference between a brownout and a loss of signal? A loss of signal is, well, a loss of signal. It could be caused by many various factors such as legit radio interference, broken antennas, or a bad receiver or transmitter. The important thing to remember is that a brownout is due to a bad installation or setup, and it's a lot more preventable, but also more common. Quick tip, be sure to test out how your plane will react when it loses signal with a fail-safe simulation test in flight, like our buddies Nate, Carl, and Oliver put to the test. Hey, let me check your fail-safe. Okay. Learning a plane's stall speed versus learning a plane's stall characteristics. Before maiden flight, we will often hear folks kindly suggesting to their friends with a new airplane to be sure to learn the plane's stall speed a few mistakes high before landing. This idea is a great one, but should actually be referred to as learning the plane's stall characteristics. 
Why? Well, we're all for learning your airplanes inside and out, but to expand on our prior section on what a stall is, a wing can stall at any attitude and or airspeed. When a wing stalls above 1G, it's referred to as an accelerated stall. Whether or not you realize it, as you gain experience in RC flying, you'll find out that when you learn how to gauge if your RC plane is close to a stall, you've actually learned how to gauge angle of attack by sight. We do want to reiterate that the idea of learning a new-to-you plane's stall characteristics is a very valuable way to gain comfort and confidence when flying. Flying a glide slope to the runway versus flying an approach or descent path to the runway. To clear the air here, a glide slope is an electronically broadcasted signal received by a full-scale airplane. The signal is displayed on an instrument in the cockpit to fly an approach through the clouds to land in bad weather. We commonly hear folks when flying RC saying things such as, I'm on a steep glide slope. RC planes do not have the capability to receive a glide slope signal. Rather, as with flying a standard approach with a full-scale plane without the use of a glide slope signal, the proper way to reference the direction you're moving through the air relative to the ground would be your approach or descent path. For those interested in the nerdier aspects of this, this is also referred to as gamma, flight path angle, or flight path vector. Four slips versus side slips. To preface this one, the definitions for these two types of slips are predominantly used in the United States. So what's the difference between them? A forward slip is that fancy trick we use to get down quickly without gaining a ton of excess airspeed if we're high in approach and have something like a dead stick scenario to deal with. Control input wise, your rudder is deflected as much as desired and ailerons are positioned opposite of this rudder input, preferably into the wind if a crosswind is present on approach. Your nose while on a forward slip will not be aligned with the direction your airplane is flying through the air and over the ground. So then what's a side slip, you ask? Well, the easiest way to think of what it looks like is one-wheel landings. This can be utilized either in calm winds or to try and land in a crosswind. Side slips are used to align the airplane's nose and most importantly, tires parallel to the runway centerline. This ensures that you won't induce a huge side load on the gear and skip across a runway like the 757 pilot. The inputs are similar to a forward slip, but generally much less aggressive. To sum it up, a forward slip equals nose away from direction of travel, and a side slip equals nose aligned with the direction of travel. For more info on how to do these slips, check out our Rudder 101 video and Crosswind Landing video. Alpha versus High Alpha versus High Beta. We'll just jump right into properly defining these terms to keep it quick and simple. Alpha is just a Greek letter often used to represent angle of attack in calculations. Therefore, High Alpha is defined as a high angle of attack or an alpha close to or beyond the critical angle of attack. In other words, you'd be incorrect to say, I'm in alpha when referring to flying at a high angle of attack. A plane is in alpha anytime the wing is flying in all phases of flight. To segue, a common one we'll hear folks saying when flying aggressive knife edges is that they are in a high alpha knife edge. Here's a potentially new one for some of you. As there is a term for the angle between the relative wind and the cord line of the wing, angle of attack, there is also a term for the angle between the relative wind and the nose of your plane to the left or right, or simply put, the yaw axis. This angle is referred to as beta. An easy way to visualize beta is in a full-scale glider that uses yarn on the windscreen to determine if they are flying coordinated. All that being said, the correct way to refer to an aggressive knife edge angle would be a high beta knife edge. The next one is admittedly a confusing one to swallow and more of a vocabulary lesson than anything else. Aero versus acro. Don't ask us why the aviation community in the US standardized these terms the way they did, but here goes. Aero is a term used to reference aeronautical engineering or the word aeronautical. Acro is used to reference aerobatics. This is where it really gets confusing. Don't get caught referring to aerobatics as acrobatics though, or you'll find yourself being laughed off the iMac pilot list. Acrobatics are what gymnasts partake in, but saying acro shorthand on its own somehow means aerobatics. Aerobatics are just that, aerobatics done in flight by an aircraft. Weird, confusing, we know. Alpha lock versus deep stall. The term alpha lock is one that's been around for a while and loosely used to reference when a tail heavy airplane gets to such an aggressive angle of attack that you lose elevator authority and end up along for the ride to the crash site. In actuality, alpha lock is a term you won't find in any books on aerodynamics. The legit jargon to reference when this event occurs is a deep stall. A deep stall isn't going to happen unless you have a very aft CG paired with certain aircraft configurations such as T-tails and delta wings. It results in a substantial reduction or loss of elevator authority, throwing the effectiveness of normal stall recovery inputs out the window. For example, in a T-tail, this loss of authority is due in part to the turbulent air coming off of the stalled main wing, blanketing the tail and making your elevator completely useless. For a delta wing, the parts of the wing forward of the elevons can send tons of turbulent air toward the elevons at incredibly high angles of attack, making them much less, if even at all, effective. 
In most cases, a plane in a deep stall will be unrecoverable. It usually only occurs with heavily loaded full-scale aircraft, such as jets or fighters, and is generally incredibly uncommon in RC planes, unless you enjoy purposely flying jets on the edge of their envelope with a very aft CG, like our friend John from Two Bros RC. AS3X versus Safe. Hot button topic, we know. But we want to clear the air here as well, especially for the grumpy traditionalists who hate on gyros. It's not uncommon to hear folks assume that AS3X means that the plane will fly itself for you. This is actually false. AS3X is a gyro that helps to counteract external forces such as turbulence so that the plane will continue to fly undisturbed in the last condition you were flying in. It does not self-level the plane for you. It makes it so that flying on a windy day, for example, becomes a non-event and you can focus on enjoying the flying. This concept is the same when applied to other gyros such as the Aura from Flex Innovations, the Reflex Gyro from FMS, etc. Safe is what auto-levels the plane for you. Safe is an additional tool available to predominantly newer pilots that acts essentially as a panic switch, or in some grumpy folks' eyes, a cheater button to level the plane if you get behind it at any point in flight. Safe is a great tool to have as a beginner, but we strongly suggest trying to move away from it as quickly as you can once you can safely begin soloing your airplanes in order to build confidence as a pilot. Skidding turns versus slipping turns. A skidding turn is a turn caused by joint aileron and rudder inputs occurring in the same direction but specifically where the rudder input is more aggressive than the aileron input. This leads to the nose pointing inside the direction of the turn, which can cause an asymmetric stall or spin. In the totally legit words of Bob Hoover, don't stall out with your ball out. Do your best to coordinate your turns, but don't get too aggressive with your happy feet or thumb. If you want more info on coordinated, slipping, and skidding turns, check out our Rudder 101 video. Here's a short but easy one, motor versus engine. In the context of aircraft and vehicles, a motor is anything that provides motion. An engine is a machine with multiple moving parts that turns fuel into motion. You can have an electrical motor, you can have a gas motor, but you can't have an electrical engine. Spins versus spirals. Without getting too technical, a spin is a condition where one wing is stalled more than the other, resulting in the plane being in a descending spin towards Earth with the flight path being dictated by gravity. A spiral is where both wings are flying and the aircraft is oriented in a generally steep descending turn, but not in a stalled condition. Ultimately, words are just words, and you shouldn't put someone down for using the wrong jargon. This video was just meant to help clarify terms so that you can avoid the lecture from your local full-scale pilot at your RC field. If you're still going to use the term alpha lock, despite our clear displeasure for it, go ahead and give this video a like. Or, if you still think you know your plane's stall speed by heart, despite zero evidence to support your theory, maybe even hit subscribe. Let us know what jargon we missed out on, happy landings, bounce one on for us, and we'll catch you next week with a new upload.